What is going on guys, welcome back. In this video today, we're going to learn how to use Jinja filters in Flask and how to define our own custom filters. So let us get right into it. All right, so we're going to talk about Jinja filters in the context of Flask applications in this video today. We're going to learn what they are, how they work, and we're going to learn how to create our own custom Jinja filters. Now, Jinja is spelled like Ninja with a J, so J-I-N-J-A, not like the term that refers to people's hair color. And it is the templating engine of Flask. So basically what we do with Jinja is we can make HTML files dynamic by inserting something that looks like Python code and is to some degree Python code. So we're going to get right into this with an example. I'm not going to cover the basics of Flask here. I'm going to assume that you already know what Flask is in general and how to build a very, very basic application. We're going to focus really on the Jinja filters in this video today. So we're going to create a new application here by saying a new file here is called app.py. Of course, if you don't have Flask installed, you just install it using pip, pip or pip3, install Flask, and then you have Flask on your system. And then we're going to just say here from Flask, import Flask with a capital F and the render template function, which is necessary to render HTML files. Then we're going to create an application, which is going to get here underscore underscore name underscore underscore as a parameter and a template folder is just going to be templates. And then we're going to have a very basic index route here. So it's going to take the path slash and the function is going to be called index. And here we can just return render template index.html, which we don't have yet. And then finally, I'm just going to say if name equals main app dot run debug equals true. So this is a very basic Flask application, nothing too fancy about it. Um, what we need now, of course, is we need a directory called templates. And in this directory, I need to have an HTML file. And this is going to be my index.html file. So for those of you who have no idea what Jinja is, as I said, it's the templating engine, uh, which is included in Flask. Um, and here now I'm going to call this my Flask application. And what it allows us to do now is that we can make certain parts of the content here dynamic. So for example, a static HTML file would look like this. I would have something like some text here, hello world. And if I run the application now, uh, you would be able to see that this is hello world here. This is the static text. The idea of the templating now is that I can do certain things here, calculations, I can get data from a database, I can load it from a file, something like that. I can pass the data here to the template and in the template I can use the data. So for example, I can pass here some text is equal to hello world in lowercase now. Um, and then instead of saying print hello world here or show hello world here, I can just use double curly brackets to access the names that I provide here as keys. So in this case, some text, I can say some text is what I want to display and some text might change, of course. And in this case, it changes to lowercase hello world. Uh, and this can be done with different things. You know, I can do calculations here, I can say calculation is equal to 10 plus 20. And then I can say calculation is equal to calculation. And then I can go ahead here and I can add another heading down here, where I use the result of the calculation. Um, so this is one thing that works. And of course, I can also add stuff to it. So I can say, okay, the calculation is 30. So I can say, add 50 to it. So proceed with the calculations here, I get 80. Um, and of course, we have different constructs like if else and for loops and stuff like that. But this is not the focus of the video today. So we're not going to go into Jinja in general, we're going to focus explicitly on filters. What's the idea of a filter? A filter is basically something that we can use using a pipe symbol using this symbol here to apply some operation to the value. So for example, let's say, Let's remove the calculation part again here. Let's just say I have the sum text hello world. But since it's a heading, since it's in an H1 tag here, I want to display it in title case. Title case basically means the initial letters of every word are always um, large. So always uppercase. What I can do in this case is I can use a built in Jinja filter called title. So I can just say pipe title and this will basically do exactly that this will turn this into hello world. Now I think in this particular case, it also works by calling the function title since we're using Python code here. 
So that is an example where the filter is not um, needed per se. But there are other examples where the filters cannot be replaced by a function. You cannot just go ahead and typecast things. Um, as far as I know, you can also not just go ahead and call uh, typecasting operators here. So for example, if some text is not hello world, but some text is 20, uh, I cannot just go ahead and typecast it by saying in some text. At least that's what I think. It's not possible. Yeah, int is not defined. Uh, what I have to do here is I have to use the pipe filter to typecast it. So if I say some text plus uh, 30, for example, here, you're going to see, I get the problem, I cannot concatenate a string uh, in an integer. And what I would need to do here is I would have to typecast the text into an integer first to do the calculation. So this is a use case, one use case, for example. Um, and we have different filters that we can use. So if we go back again, and we say, okay, it's hello world, I can use the filter um, upper to get it full uppercase. Um, or I can use the filter replace with parameters, I can say replace, and I want to replace all the else by once, like this. Um, and then I would get this result here. So sort of this lead speak representation here, at least for the L. Um, so that is something that we can do here. There are different filters and a lot of them are built in. And here we have a list of built in filters in the documentation. Hopefully you will find a link in the description down below. This is just a Jinja documentation list of built in filters. And we have absolute for absolute numbers, uh, a lot of different things that we can use here. However, this does not cover all the things that we maybe want to do. So what we can do here is we can define our own custom filters that we can then use here in the HTML file so that we can work with them. And this is what this video is actually about. So it's not about the built in filters, it's about creating our own customized filters. So how do we do that? It's actually very simple in flask, we just have to create a new function here, we're going to annotate it with app dot and this time not route, but template underscore filter. And this template filter now is going to have a name, we can give it for example, reverse string, reverse string is going to be a function that reverses a string. Um, and we can now call the function itself reserve, uh, not reserve, reverse string filter, we get s as input, which is the string itself. Um, this is always mandatory, because you need to apply this to something in this case, a string. Uh, and what we're going to return here is we're going to return this fancy operation here, colon colon negative one, which basically just reverses the order of the string. Um, if you don't know why this works, this is just a nice Python hack, you can just Google it. Uh, you can also, of course, use a list comprehension and join it together. So this is also an option, you don't have to use this. Uh, but this now is a filter that we can use in our template. So I can just go ahead now, and I can replace this, I can replace replace, and I can say here reverse underscore string. And when I go now to my application, you can see hello world is now reversed from right to left. So this is the custom filter I created. So again, we have at app, or whatever you call this. And instead of saying route, you say template filter, you provide the name, this name here is relevant, this is just a function name, this name here is relevant. Uh, then you have the parameter and then you do something with it to get an output. Another thing that we can do is we can alternate the case. So we can say here app dot template filter, the name of the filter is alternate. And then we can say def alternate filter s and then I can say return. For this, we can use a list comprehension, I can say empty string join following list comprehension, I can say c dot upper, if i modulo two equals, come on, equals zero, else c lower, for I C in enumerate S. So basically, what we're doing is we're iterating over all the characters of the string, we're enumerating them, so they have an index. And if the index is uh, even, we get the uppercase version, otherwise, we get the lowercase version. So that's a very simple one. And what we can do now is we can see if this works. So alternate. And you can see this is the result. All right, so this is something that we can do. Now, we can also define filters with parameters. So I can go ahead, for example, and define a filter called repeat, I can say at app template filter, I want to call the filter repeat. 
and the functionality should be to repeat the string n times. So I can say times uh, is the parameter, or you can also call it n. And what this basically should do is it should return s times times, or times n, depending on what you call this. And what I can do with that is I can say repeat, and then I can say five, for example. And then here, you would get five times the string. Now the problem is I cannot call this now without any value. So if I just call this, you will see I get a type error because uh, there's a missing argument, I can circumvent this by just setting this to a default, for example, one, and in this case, it would just not be repeated because I didn't provide anything. And it would just be displayed normally. Uh, or I could say maybe it's more reasonable to set it to two, because if you want to repeat it, you repeat it. If you just write repeat, it's going to just double it. Um, yeah, depends on what you want to implement. But you can be creative with this. Now you can use this for styling, you can use this for all sorts of different things. And this just allows you to have these filters. And instead of constantly using them in your code here, you can just use them whenever you need them in your Jinja templating uh, sections here where you have your quote unquote Python code. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.